In the middle of June, I went to a festival in Denmark for three days, something that is not usually right up my street. But my friend had asked if I wanted to go, ensuring me that it wouldn't be obnoxiously crowded and noisy, and we could drive the 25 kilometers back and forth. I decided I was up for a bit of adventure, and it was marvelous. I couldn't be there at the very beginning, but arrived in time to hear the last 20 minutes of a Danish band called Nico J, who were a blast, and who looked summery and cool in their white linen outfits. My mood lifted instantly as we and everyone else sang along with them. But Sting was the reason I went to Heartland at all. His songs were the soundtrack of my youth, in both the US and back in Denmark, and it was more than a concert. It was like revisiting my former self, because I remembered all those songs from way back. But because he's older than me and is very much still going strong, it wasn't just nostalgic. With his positive energy, insane charisma, willingness to share the spotlight with his band members, many times the lights would focus on them and leave him in darkness. And with his obvious fitness level, let's not beat around the bush here, it wasn't just an icon I was looking at that night, but a role model. If he could deliver that at age 71, I really have no excuses. I wish I could leave on the sound here, but I've gotten in trouble with YouTube over copyright before, so I dare not. But you may imagine songs like Message in a Bottle, Englishman in New York, Shape of My Heart, and many others. And as encore, Roxanne, and my favorite of his, Fragile. He said he wanted to end it quietly so that we might leave quietly. And I loved that. We left at midnight because we had a full day ahead of us the following day. We parked further away the next day to save money and walked the two and a half kilometers to the castle, whose grounds have been the venue for Heartland since it began back in 2016. It felt luxurious to walk along a country road on a beautiful summer day, heading for a castle and a festival full of culture, which meant not only music, but also talks and art and lovely food and wine. We heard the last of a talk between former Prime Minister Hille Thorning schmidt and actor Sophie Grobbel, who were both interesting and smart. And then we stayed in that tent for the next talk. A talk about community between the Danish director Thomas Winterberg and Margrethe Vestager, the coolest Danish politician in my mind. Thomas Winterberg won an Oscar for his movie Druck or Another Round, and Margrethe Vestager is currently serving as Executive Vice President of the European Commission for a Europe Fit for the Digital Age and for competition. She has brought lawsuits against some of the big players in the world for not paying their taxes, including Amazon and Facebook. They both had a very international outlook, which my friend and I found extremely inspiring and refreshing. They were also totally down to earth and warm and funny. One of the things I took away from one of the people we listened to 
I forget who, but it may have been our former Prime Minister, is to not put yourself, or anyone else for that matter, in too small a box and say, oh, that's how I am. I'm not the type of person to do this, that or the other. Why limit yourself or others? It correlated with what was said in another talk the following day, and I wish I had it verbatim. But such is the nature of these talks. You can't really relate the experience of them to others after the fact, because it's the very nature of their being live that feels invigorating, whether it was the talks or the concerts. We walked around while listening to whatever was playing and savored that we were hanging out in beautiful surroundings on a sunny summer's day. The following day would be much more crowded by virtue of it being a Saturday, but I didn't know that yet. I felt that it was this lounging around, with music in the background, plenty of room around us and beauty all around. That was the best thing about Heartland. When you bought a bottle of wine, you got real glasses to go with it. Plastic was for beer, and we opted for wine. The average age of a Heartland festival goer, I found out afterwards, is 38. So some of the music was a trip down memory lane for many. Also, I spotted a lot of cool handmade knitwear and decided to up my game the following day. Later, we went to a crazy performance in a tent where members of the audience were told to wear animal masks, and I sat gaping throughout much of it. We ended the evening by sitting once again on the grass, enjoying a casual dinner while listening to the Cardigans, a Swedish band that I listened to constantly some 20 years ago. We began our third day by showing up 40 minutes early to get a good seat for a talk with American author Brett Easton Ellis, he of the infamous novel American Psycho. Although the novel disgusted me when I read it 25 years ago, the talk was nothing short of amazing. He was interviewed by Danish journalist Martin Krasnick, and both were in splendid form that day. I'll leave the word to him for a few minutes, because it's not every day I get to record live words from someone of his caliber. There are this many people to see a writer at a festival. These are uh, your clothes. You're crazy. <laughs> society whose values I didn't like and I didn't know where else to go and I felt trapped in it at 23, 24, 25. I was becoming a man. I was entering into the society, the late 80s, Reagan's America, New York, the yuppie world, uh, everyone defined by money and how much money they had and how, you know, the superficiality that was embraced. And I had mistakenly assumed that New York was going to be this very authentic, gritty place that I saw in the movie of the the movies of the 1970s, and that's why I wanted to move there so badly. But it, it was a, not the time to move to New York because it was all about the money. It was all about the superficiality. It was all about Wall Street, and you know. Um, I, I w and I felt trapped in it. I felt like I didn't really want to be in this world. And so my frustration is what led to write American Psycho because in many ways, I, I kind of related to Patrick Bateman's madness. <laughs> I don't know if I really related to it, but I kind of did. Brett Easton Ellis gave us something to think about, and we felt entirely uplifted afterwards. Again, it was that broad international outlook which felt both freeing and enlightening, if also challenging. Then we went and sat on a grassy slope with a view of the castle and shared a bottle of rosé. Here's to Brett Easton Ellis. And a castle in the background, honestly.
It felt almost otherworldly, and it was this part of the festival, I felt, that set it apart from more rowdy festivals. That part was right up my street. We met up with a friend of my friend who had come for the day with some of her friends, and we had some excellent drinks. One of the friends asked me my last name. I told her and she said, I knew it. I recognized you instantly. We used to play with Barbies in your room before you moved to the States. I couldn't believe it. What were the odds that a friend of my friend was friends with one of my childhood friends? Also, how could she recognize me from when I was 12? It was such a bonus experience. We had lunch together, went to hear a Danish musician called Peel, and then we slowly made our way to the area in front of the main scene to get a good spot. The final act of the festival for us was Robbie Williams, and the audience did an excellent job of letting him entertain us. What a crazy, quick-witted, thoroughly entertaining, but also soulful guy he was. He connected with the audience throughout and talked about getting old at age 49, but I thought he'd never looked so good, which of course may say more about me and my age. But with a kind of silver gray mohawk, I don't think so. I'm pretty sure we were all touched by his explosive charisma that night. I wish I could include more of the clips where he talked to the audience, but he used a lot of swear words and I'm afraid either YouTube would ban the video or someone would get offended. No one in the audience got offended, of course. We knew what we were getting and we were there for it. Also, it's Denmark. Almost no one raises an eyebrow if you swear in public. Any time I will know if I am safe is if you sing along with me to this song. And, 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 shh, it wasn't a very big hit. So if you know this, I'll be very f***ing happy. Nelson Mandela had taken his first steps to freedom, and the Danish football team began their qualification campaign for Euro 92! But alongside those key moments, a more seismic event was about to take shape in the form of five young boys from Manchester and Stoke on Trent. We were about to get together and change the musical landscape forever! My friend, who also thought he was amazing, put it succinctly after the concert. He does exactly what he was put on this earth to do, and he does it so well. All good things must come to an end, and when the festival was over, we showed up again bright and early the next day. We had signed up as volunteers, and a full day of manual labor awaited us, in exchange for the fee of the rather expensive tickets. People who had spent the night there in tents were slowly getting ready to leave, and it was strange seeing the empty grounds of the castle now. We reported for duty as heart workers and began dismantling art installations, undoing cables, carrying railings, shoveling wood chips and whatnot. 18 kilometers later, just today, I am beat. I've never done so much manual labor in my life, I swear to God, like 10 hours. Thankfully, the weather was lovely but by the time we left at 8.30 that evening, my body was sore everywhere. It's a peacock. And would remain so for the next few days. Ours was one of the last cars in the huge parking lot. And as we drove home that night, I felt I'd been at a summer camp in another country for a week. If you've ever been on the fence about attending Heartland Festival, or if you come to Denmark in the middle of June, consider buying a ticket for Heartland. It really is kind of a one-time experience.